Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are getting us from. Uh, welcome to the Solar Power Engineering Lecture 3, where I look at the solar PV power potential, the solar PV power potential. Uh, initially, the last uh, two lectures, I've presented the traditional uh, PV system where we have the solar panel, the charge controller, the battery, and the inverter. So moving also forward, I present a modern PV uh, system. So with a modern PV system, basically uh, there is a hybrid uh, inverter, uh, which is shown there with the brand of Noven Z Power. So this hybrid inverter has got the embedded uh, a charge controller. So it can also accept the uh, AC in and also AC out. Of course, with the, the traditional PV systems, there are also some which accept uh, AC in and AC out. So this uh, one I just gave you for your appreciation uh, of the traditional and modern uh, PV system. Then uh, moving on, uh, one has got to recognize the solar PV system pointers. Uh, if you are going to look at the potential, you might as well look at the pointers to the system, the advantages as well as the disadvantages. So, some of the pointers are that with solar PV, you actually need the systematic classification of the solar energy technologies and also the PV type systems, which are one of uh, we've uh, tackled in the previous uh, slides, uh, the previous uh, lectures. So if you missed that, you can actually go to our area videos and find this. And then one also has got to recognize the benefits and the limitation of the system and technology compared to other generation sources. So this is one important aspect to appreciate uh, what you can actually benefit, which, is, which are the advantages and also the limitations of the system so that you are within the system's uh, boundaries. Of course, when it comes to applications, one has got to identify uh, the common applications when it comes to standalone system and also hybrid system. Uh, if we go back to the first slide, we see that this one is a standalone system where you don't have the utility interaction with the system. Then this one here is an hybrid system. So what uh, basically is that you have got to identify the possibilities of where you can apply these two systems. Also, when it comes to, to, to market of PV industry, there is need for characterization of the various segments and their roles so that each and every important aspect uh, of the industry knows uh, what uh, uh, their role is. So for instance, uh, we have got uh, the Zambia uh, Renewable Agency Zarena in Zambia, which regulates when it comes to uh, renewable energy. There's also a need to understand the market trends and opportunities for, for PV systems. So these are some of the pointers that will make us start to understand the potential that PV has in a particular country uh, globally. So when we move on, we find that we also need to look at the advantages. For instance, uh, a PV system is energy independence. We have got the sunlight, which is a variable and free. Once you install the system, there's power generation. All you need is just to invest uh, in the system. And also the application of the system, the use of the system is environmentally friendly technology. So there is actually uh, nothing related to pollution of course, other scholars would argue to say uh, the production of the actual components might add some carbon footprint. But when we come to the actual application of the technology and the system, 
This is environmentally friendly technology. For a system uh, that has been designed well uh, to consider all associated parameters, it has got high reliability, minimum maintenance, and long life. We are talking about a system that uh, can, can be there for 25 years, a system that can be there for 30 years, a system that can be there for 15 years. So all that is needed is just the uh, investment, and then you have got a high reliability, minimum maintenance, and long life. And then when we come to these systems, uh, let's take for an example application for uh, a residential house. You can actually have a system that is expandable and also modular in design. You can start with two batteries, you can start with uh, 1,000 worth of solar panels, uh, you can start with the, say, five kilowatts of, uh, of, 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 uh, of the inverter. But then with time, you can actually scale up. You can add more batteries, you can add more inverters, you can add more solar panels to actually uh, expand your system to meet your daily energy and power demand. And then we are, when you have a reliable uh, uh, installation, you actually reduce your vulnerability to power outages. For example, we can take of Zambia and some other uh, countries where road shedding is the talk of the day. So if you have a solar system installed, you can actually reduce uh, you, the time that you, are, you don't have uh, electricity. And then for some of the important essential roads, for instance, you can have a security camera. Uh, you can also have uh, a security systems. And since you, you can be vulnerable to power outages from the grid, you can actually implement a PV system that is dedicated for these essential roads that are very important to add to your quality of life and maintain your security. In, in places where it is, you have thieves, you have got a lot of uh, breakings. Of course, the system that has got uh, in such a way, you can also have disadvantages. Solar PV system has got high initial costs. So what you put in when you start to do the system is actually viewed as higher as compared to maybe other, other, other types of, of, of generation. So if, if we are to consider, say, we want to put up a one megawatt solar system, one megawatt uh, hydro, you find that uh, uh, solar will have higher initial cost. And then as we will see later on, when we start to look at the uh, potential uh, global horizontal irradiation and the uh, direct normal irradiation, you find that areas of low power densities require large RA surface areas for you to actually produce the same amount of energy and power with another area that has got higher power densities will require less RA surface area. Um, and then one also part of a uh, disadvantage is that uh, the energy production depends on location, time of the day, year, or array orientation. Of course, uh, this part of uh, the disadvantage is basically uh, it's, it's, it's easily mitigatable for a system that has been carefully designed and also other factors have been considered. Then we come to now the actual potential. I uh, will talk about uh, Zambia when it comes to DNI, uh, GHI, and also the power potential. I'll talk about Zambia, I'll talk about India, and also I'll talk about globally. So this is one example of a map that you can find at Solar GIS, uh, um, which has got the blessings of IFC, IFC and the World Bank. So if you look at the uh, uh, the, the spectrum of this uh, uh, map, you find that we are able to get the daily totals and yearly totals in terms of kilowatt hour per square meter that can be produced at a particular place. Of course, one aspect that has also been mentioned here is that 
the model uncertainty has been reduced uh, by ground measurements. One thing that I can mention here is that in Zambia, we have got measurements that have been done since uh, uh, the year 2017 uh, to actually uh, confirm some of these models that have been uh, utilized in the past when we didn't have measurements. So those measurements actually reduces the uncertainty that is associated with a model that can predict the output over a square meter. So the color coding that is shown here is also in correspondence with the color coding here that we have uh, from 4.2 to 5.8, that is the daily totals and also the yearly totals from 1534 to 2118. So this actually gives you the, the, the potential that you have in terms of the direct normal irradiation over the surfaces of Zambia. So some of the towns that have been mentioned there, you can see Mongu, Choma, Rusaka, Kawe, Sorwezi, Ndora, Mansa, Kasama, and Chipata. Of course, when you go to an interactive map that is live, you are able to actually zoom in to look at the individual locations that can be of your interest. If we move on also, we, we actually look at the GHI, which is the global horizontal irradiation. Also in respect to this one, we also have a map that shows the different color coding and gives the potential of the amount of irradiation in terms of global horizontal irradiation that uh, can be received on a particular place uh, in terms of the daily totals and the yearly totals. This can help a designer, this can help a solar uh, specialist uh, to actually um, estimate how much can be produced at a particular place. Of course, GHI and DNI are some of the important uh, irradiation parameters that we need. Of course, if, if we actually factor in the optimal uh, angle, uh, the irradiation uh, and also the temperature, we can actually come to a power conversion potential, which gives you the kilowatt hour, the kilowatt peak of installation that is at a particular place. So here also now, here it gives you, for instance, if we take for a press in Munirunga, Munirunga, we see that the maximum daily total is actually 4.6 kilowatt hour, per kilowatt peak. So if we are to, to install 1000 watts peak of panels, we can actually uh, obtain 4.6 kilowatt hour uh, of energy in Mwinirunga. Mwinirunga is just there. Of course, it's one of the towns that have not been shown, of course, and I've used it because for easier identification of the color, which is yellow here, and also Mwinirunga there, uh, we've got a uh, yellow. So this is one important aspect when we are going to look at the potential of power production in relation to solar power. So this one is for Zambia. So if we are to move to a country, for example, India, which is in the other part of, of the world, we see that we have a similar aspect. For India, we can actually get the DNI and GHI um, uh, irradiation figures similar to what we had for Zambia. But then what has been shown here is the actual power conversion. So if we look at uh, the towns, Bangalore, uh, Chennai, uh, Kanpu, uh, New Day. So you, you actually also have the color coding that can give you the actual power production that can be produced in these areas in relation to the installed uh, peak in terms of the power panel. So if you can actually uh, try to see from the daily totals, we have 3.2 to actually six. If we go back and look for Zambia, Zambia is 4.6 to 5, 5.0, which gives you that different places locally, globally, uh, we will have a different uh, production aspect and which confirms when we say that energy production depends on the location, time of the day, time of the year, and actually the orientation of the panels that you put uh, on your roof, either ground mounted, or of course, if, if, if it's the new technology of 
floating solar PV. So apart from India also, other, other countries can wonder to say, okay, can we have a few of these uh, to, to actually uh, estimate uh, how much can be produced? The answer is yes. If we look at globally, so which actually has got we have, we can see Zambia here, we can actually see India is there, we can see Australia there, we can see Brazil, uh, North America, South America, and parts of Europe and Asia. So this uh, PV power potential resource map are actually very important when we come to uh, becoming a solar power expert or uh, a technician who can actually estimate how much power can be produced from a panel that installed on a particular place. So I implored you to, to actually have a look at the solar GIS. You can actually type into Google and uh, you are able to see for different countries, you are able to see for different places. And of course, if you need one that is live, uh, you can actually uh, write to me and I can send you the link of one that is live that can actually give you uh, the estimates. For instance, if we apply what is here, and, and, and a dimension, a system uh, to, to cater for the demand, then you can actually see how much energy is produced per day, per year, and um, uh, of course, even per, per, per hour. So basically looking at uh, today's, uh, we, 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 we've uh, looked at the potential, the potential of solar PV. So uh, any press, globally in different countries has got the potential to produce a solar power um, uh, which 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 uh, can be utilized uh, is is free um, and 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 is highly reliable and the system is uh, designed so thank you very much for uh, watching uh, the uh, the lecture number three uh, thank you very much I invite more likes, uh, share, and subscribe so that uh, many more can actually benefit and appreciate this, this technology that is uh, capable of being applied almost everywhere globally. And if you have questions, you can actually send to me on that email. Uh, thank you very much and uh, see you in the next uh, lecture. Thank you.